Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. That is just a fact of life. Hello and welcome back to the Adam and Ro Show. I'm your host, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro. Good day to you, Ro. Good evening to you, Adam. First of all, I would like to thank every single one of our listeners from last week who made it our, our highest uh, show that Ro and I have done together. So thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully you've enjoyed the format and you're going to be sticking around this week. If you have just uh, stopped by and this is your second time listening to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe. We're on our way to 5,000 subscribers now. And uh, yeah, make sure you give us a, a thumbs up, thumbs down. Uh, I think we got quite a few last week. Uh, the best, once again, one of our shows has ever done. So um, for those stopping by, just to give you a bit of a rundown of what we do here on the show or what was going to be uh, the new format going forward, uh, we usually set you a trivia question to, to answer first of all, and I'm going to go into that in a second uh, for last week's, and then Rose going to set you this week's. Uh, so make sure you answer that in the comments section below. And then we just uh, basically have about a 15, 20 minute chat about what's been going on this week. Now, we're very conscious, obviously, that it's bound for glory on Sunday evening. Uh, we're recording this at the moment. Uh, I, well, I, I think it's Saturday morning for Roe, it's Saturday afternoon for me. So we've only got two days until Bound for Glory. So some of the stuff we're going to be talking about is the build-up as opposed to what actually happens. Although we'll be, I'm sure, having a lot of content on this channel as soon as the pay-per-view happens. So uh, although we're going to be talking about stuff, if you're listening to this after Bound for Glory, bear that in mind. So, um, yeah, so let's dive into the trivia question first of all. And uh, I want to, first of all, pass that congratulations who did get the answer right first, although there was quite a few. Uh, and that was Daniel Bishop, who answered correctly to Sam Shaw. So the, the clues being he debuted in a well, he debuted in a gut check, which is actually wrong. He debuted well before that as another character. But uh, what it, his first appearance as Sam Shaw was in a gut check segment, uh, which was interrupted by Aces and Eights. Uh, he got following week he got another shot at gut check against doug williams which he lost and then finally he lost a uh, the loser gets committed to an insane asylum match against mr anderson and of course it was sam shaw so well done to daniel bishop but uh, also well done i'm gonna try and find out who it was who, who gave us his, his original debut name as well which i think it was is it lupus or something like that um i'm just having a quick look through ah, i should have got this ready shouldn't i uh, yeah, so it was Lupus, and that was Jay, who, or Mr. Jay, as his, or HRJ, I should say, as his uh, logo says on YouTube, who, who gave us that extra bit of information. So well done to you. So, Ro, over to yourself uh, for this week's question. Yeah, before I get into it, I just want to um, say thank you to everyone as well who tuned in. I mean, you know, it was just a pilot, and Adam and I were, had been talking about it. And, you know, we, we didn't know what the feedback would be, and the feedback has been all positive. So just once again, you know, we appreciate um, all the people who tuned in and um, your kind comments as well. So for this week's trivia question, okay, I'm going to dig back into TNA over a couple, about two, three years ago. Okay, I'm a former X Division champion. I have the luxury of competing in an intergender matchup that had implications to bound for glory and then the last one is i once challenged somebody in office and nothing came of it who am i okay as usual i have absolutely no idea and it's not because uh um it, just row always sets incredibly difficult ones for my liking but there you go leave your comments below uh, we usually check all the youtube comments that's where we pick up most of our questions and those kind of things so so make sure you do leave it below and and we did have a load of feedback on on last week's topic which was obviously the continued tweeting between austin aries and johnny impact which is still going on at the moment uh, johnny impact uh threw back some barbed comments about having a vegan catering buffet that uh austin aries apparently guards so no one can, can eat from it so yeah that's still going on quite entertaining if you want to check that out um but we did also get a question in the comments section this week and, and it's to do with bound for glory and the debut and what we talked um on several places about you know who's going to be answering eli drake's uh 
um, what you call it, um, open challenge, those kind of things, who's going to be making debuts or, and the like. And one name that was, was uh, thrown out there by Herb Dorr was, would we like to see the Bullet Club in Impact? And it may not be at both glory, but would we like to see them anyway? So, so Ro, what, what have you got on this? I think it's highly unlikely, but if you're talking about it happening, it's not going to be the iter iteration that I think most people would want. So um, I don't know everyone who's a part of it, but I, if I just had to guess, if in just a fantasy book, if we were going to get the Bullet Club, I think you're looking at the Young Bucks and probably, is it Hangman Page? Uh, I'm, I'm not too familiar with him. Like, I don't think or you'd get the big names. Like, obviously, people would probably want the Kenny Omegas, Young Buck, Cody. And um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not too familiar with everyone in it. But I just think if we were to get it, it would kind of be similar to, like, when we, when the NWO kind of came back. I mean, you know, luckily you got the, the major guys. But it would be kind of be a, the iteration that people probably wouldn't uh, imagine. Yeah, it would be like bringing back Aces and Eights and uh, you had uh, Devon and um, Wes Briscoe turning up and, and Garrett, Garrett Bischoff. Yeah, they're the three coming back as Aces and Eights. Yeah, you, you're quite right. It would be a watered-down version. And to be honest with you, we've already seen a watered-down version of the club in WWE when uh, Carl Anderson and uh, Doc, uh, Luke Gallows, went over to there. So, you know, they've already done a watered-down version. For me, it's way too late. I mean, if they were going to do the Bullet Club, they should have done it when it was really hot a year ago, at least a year ago, two years ago uh, even. And uh, I think there's absolutely no value in doing it, to be honest. I absolutely see no value. I, I, I joked about Wes Briscoe and uh, Garrett Bischoff there. I actually wouldn't mind seeing Aces and Eights come back. But then again, I'm a sucker for punishment on that one. I, 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 that was a, I like that period in, uh, in TNA history. So, so thanks for the question, Herb. Um, keep asking them and uh, yeah, we'll do our best to answer them next week. So anyway, back onto the main point of the Adam and Rose show where we have a look at this week's news and uh, talk about some other things that are going on or, or just on our minds in general. So uh, last week we talked about the, the main event and we, we're going to move away from Bound for Glory slightly here and we're going to talk about actually impact as a whole because this week's ratings were down again. And this is obviously with the go home show towards Bound for Glory. And I think it's worthwhile just maybe addressing that, but also addressing the rumors that, well, not the rumors, the fact that uh, Impact is going to be moving to 10 p.m. on Pop TV as well. So, so Ro, what have you got on this and what are your views? I, uh, it's uh, moving 10 p.m. Eastern time. Um, you know, with me living on the West Coast, that means it's going to come on at 7. And I obviously, you know, do, uh, due to schedule and whatnot, I normally have to DVR Impact anyways. I can't remember the last time I actually watched it when it initially aired. You know, I don't know what to think because at first it was no big deal. But then it led me wondering just by conversations on Twitter with uh, some individuals was like, it, does this mean the beginning of the end of their relationship with Pop? Because, you know, they're moving them in favor of some rerun shows. So then that's when I was just like, hmm, you know, because I've always been of the mindset that the relationship that Impact has with Pop TV, you know, it's it's a good relationship. You know, you think about in past history with Destination America, I always bring that up because that was just horrible. And then towards the telling of Spike, how things have always been shaky. And, you know, a lot of people are saying, well, they need to get off Pop uh, and Look, I think if there was an opportunity where there was another network interested, I think they would entertain that idea. But if you have no offers, they're not going to leave one network and then just be kind of just floundering, trying to find another one. And the last thing I'll add, and <laughs> I, uh, BQ always mentions this, and it's really true. The in although this one is probably the minor out of the past two, it seems like every bound for glory there's some type of controversy that the company has. Like I said, once again, this is just with them moving time slots. So, out of the you know fear of show not going on or other backstage uh, problems that they've had in years past leading up to bound for glory, this is probably smaller on the scale. But nonetheless, like there's always some drama circulating towards bound for glory. Yeah, absolutely. And just to go back to the original question of, you know, moving time slots and 
and uh, the viewership, those kind of things. It's very strange talking about this for me because I, I live in the UK. So, uh, you know, pop TV doesn't, it, it's not broadcast over here. We have, we actually have it on Spike UK, which funnily enough, they pissed about with the timings as well. You know, they, they, they I think it started at nine then it went to 10. Now it's at 11, you know, so, so they've absolutely had no faith in, in the ratings and, you know, and we, as I say, we get reruns of the A team and things like that instead. Um, so, you know, what you're going through over in the States is similar to what's happening, what happened over here in the UK, albeit on a much minor scale. Um, I think at this point, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because if you're only getting 190K, which is what it was this week, you know, most people are going to be watching it on DVR or will watch it if it's at three o'clock in the morning. It, it doesn't make a difference. You know, the, the way that the ratings are, uh, are, are done anyway is, is, is not accurate for a start. You know, they don't take into account people DVRing. It's a, a very small population of, of, you know, sorry, percentage of the population to have one of these desktop sets on their TV to measure if you're watching it and then they multiply it by a fact, you know, to, to get the figure. So it's not accurate because, you know, they could, they, although they have it in a cross section, you know, it just is not true reflection. So I, I think the pop TV deal and moving to 10 o'clock, I think it is signaling the end for pop where they go after that. I don't think it matters. I, I think that they should now embrace non network TV. I really think that that's the way to go and to find a new way of monetizing. Now, I know the monetizing through things like YouTube is going to be much, much smaller uh, and the like, but there'll be other platforms that they could potentially go to. And, you know, a Netflix, a Hulu, uh, Amazon Prime, uh, YouTube Red, you know, all of these are potentials as well, or just on main, main on, on YouTube or Twitch. And I think that's the way to go because that will give an accurate reflection of what the product is doing now. Um, because, Every time someone streams it, you get a, an imprint, a, a an internet imprint, you know, so you know who's watching it. Just the same as this show gets, you know, every time someone, you know, listens to us, we know how many people are listening. Um, we don't know where you live, or, luckily enough, you know, because otherwise we'll come and say, why didn't you give us a thumbs up? But, you know, it, it's, it's given us, a, you know, an imprint. So we know what's happening as opposed to if we only got statistics on, you know, a hundred people across YouTube who have a desk, you know, a desktop to record it. And then we times that by, by a million, you know, so what I'm trying to say is at this point, I think network TV is antiquated and it, we don't impact doesn't need to be on mainstream TV anymore. Um, so if they move from pop and they go to another channel similar to pop where they're going to be buried in the ratings, I don't think there's any point doing it because all you're going to see is the network numbers going down and then that, creates foot you know news stories on the dirt sheet saying impact is about to die it's only got 150 this week blah 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 so unless they're going to go to a big network that's going to get behind it i don't see the point of going to pop tv2 elsewhere another destination america unless they can get on you know something where they, they are going to get viewers that there's no point i say go for streaming so uh roundabout way i think pop tv's done uh you know this has all the signs of a of a station saying oh well Let's just push it. We, we've got a contract to fulfill. Let's push it out. Just the same as Destination America. It's just the same as Spike TV did. And uh, yeah, th they'll, they'll be somewhere else in the new year is my prediction. And the last thing I'll add is, you know, on an on a optimistic point of view, I think some were of the mindset that they're moving to that slot, using the opportunity to provide edgier content. So maybe you can change the rating. I forget what the rating they get now, but you can change your rating to TVMA. I mean, for the most part, I am and you know, where I kind of disagree with you a little bit is I do think having a, being on a TV channel is important because I'm, you know, while I know some people will still follow as far as on the YouTube and, um, you know, whatever streams or, you know, GWN, etc. I just think, you know, being on a channel would just, you know, go a long way for them. And I'd hate to see them flounder. If there were was a channel, and I don't know what their interest level would be, I'd see what's up with WGN, and only because they were the channel that aired the All In pre-show, and I, I forgot the number of how it went ratings wise, but it looked like it went decent, you know, for that just being the pre-show. So maybe that there they might be interested. But once again, the only thing I want is if there is a situation where, you know, this is the end of the relationship between Pop TV, then I just want them to have a fallback plan or they need to be doing something 
you know, as we speak, I don't want no situation where they're just kind of just floundering and then breaking news, you know, <laughs> they're not going to be airing anymore and who knows what's next. Just on, you know, the channel, for some reason, 900,000 sticks in my mind about the, the all in pre-show. But I mean, as I said, I'm clicking that figure out of the air, possibly. Um, I, I think the actual ratings for on pop this week is is a reflection on the lackluster last few weeks on on in the Mexico tapings. And I, I, I you know, I just think that ratings usually reflect the week before show because you know if i'm watching a show this week and i think oh you know like, like the walking dead i used to watch that religiously um and then i think well that was a really poor episode i'm less likely to tune in next week but my rating will still be counted for this week if that makes sense yeah so so what i'm saying is i think that this week's rating is more reflective of last week's show than this week's show um although i didn't th particularly think this was a was, was a great show either this week uh i, I think the mexico experiment hasn't worked to be honest and I think the problem has been that they shouldn't have done it as the build up to, to Bound for Glory. I think they should have been done after Bound for Glory and had like a Vegas crowd, um, you know, and done it before there. So anyway, uh, it is what it is. So we're 15 minutes into the show already. Uh, we, we always say we're going to try and keep these shows, you know, between 15 and 30. So we're already breaking that promise to you. Uh, just like any good wrestling promoter, we lie. Um, but we are going to just cover a few more things before we sign off for this week. So, um, random thoughts in my head before i go to some of your random thoughts uh so yeah so what i was going to ask you was um what do you think is going to be the, the best match of bound for glory what, what are you looking forward to the most you know what i'm really looking forward to seeing a johnny impact versus a austin aries match just because i really believe it's now or never for johnny impact if he's going to be the guy um he really needs to deliver he needs to do something out of the ordinary yeah I, i'm gonna well there's just three or four matches on there I, I think they'll all be good matches um but the one that intrigues me the most because i, I think i've got the result wrong is the tire versus uh tire versus tessa match and although the build fit has been pretty poor it's just come out of nowhere i actually think this could potentially be the best match well the best knockouts match we've seen this year because when i think back to this year and some of the knockout matches uh, I, there's only two that stick in my mind, uh, and I'll ask you in a second, and, and, and also our listeners, if you can let us know what your favourite knockout match has been this year. But there's only two that really stick in my mind that uh, that have been any good, and and that's not to say that they've been poor otherwise. But but the two that that jump out to me are when Ali beat Laurel Van Ness for the title. I thought that was a very very good match. And that, to me, was down to Laurel Van Ness. And the other one was where Kiera challenged Tessa and came out fighting and came out on the the offense. I thought that was most probably the best match we've seen this year. So uh, bearing in mind what I'm saying is what I'm, tr what I'm trying to get round to is is that I don't think it's been a a, a, a high water mark for the, the knockouts division. I think although there's been some good storylines, the rest itself hasn't been good. But Tessa is without a doubt one of the best wrestlers out there. And I think Tyre is as well. So I think if they've, you know, all the things we've seen of Tyre recently have been very short matches. So I think putting these two in the ring on the biggest night of the year for Impact, I, I think this could be absolutely spectacular match uh, and a sleeper, uh, the, the sleeper match of the night. And it would be beneficial for Tessa as well. They need to have some sort of extended feud. It can't be a scenario where, you know, it's just a one-off and then move forward. Because I think that's what's missing in the company right now is a lot of these matches that we get, especially that involve the title, is just a one-off and then they just keep on going. You know, whereas somebody could be champion feuding with someone who's not challenging them, you know, forever. So it's kind of backwards in a sense. But I think, you know, it, this does have the potential. If I had to say, though, as far as this year, I mean, obviously, Kiera and uh, Tessa, when they had their matchups were good. But really, my favorite knockouts match in the past couple of years was the last woman standings match between Rosemary and Jade for the knockouts championship. It was just that that was just to me just from the bumps that they were taking on the ramp to everything else that was probably one of my favorites uh you're, you're cheating here you're cheating here i said this year come on <laughs> come on man sorry can, can you think of any this year that, that really stood out to you other than the kiara one 
you know, that was pretty much the one, because I'm thinking now, okay, because Alley and LVN, that was uh, earlier this year. I'm trying to think, um, maybe the Demons Dance, but wasn't that towards the, the end of last year? Uh, I think it was, because it was uh, Bound for Glory time, because then the, that's when the feud fell away, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, because she couldn't go to, to Canada last year. So I, I think uh, it was against Tyre, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so they, they haven't feuded all this year. Wait, it might have been this year. I don't know. But if it was this year, then I guess I'd say that. So, Max so, so and that, Rosemary. <laughs> yeah, so um, so there you go. I, I think it, we're both in agreement that it hasn't been a great year for the knockouts with regards to in-ring ability. But um, I, I, this has got all the potential to be, you know, a, a great match. Because I think these are most probably the two best wrestlers on the active res- roster at the moment. Except for, of course, Casey Spinelli, who doesn't get a, sh- a look in these days. Yep. So anyway, all right. Um, so that that was the first thing I wanted to talk about. The uh, anything on your mind before we we sign off for the week? Yeah. Let me just add in just as far as the ratings. Um, this week they brought in it was one hundred and eighty three k. So it was down. Um, just my opinion, and I think you might have mentioned it too. I think the Mexican tapings have been a fail. Um, you can argue maybe because they did it towards the build up. I just think how the shows were designed, once again, you know, copycatting what you're saying. They've been designed as Twitch shows. And I also think, too, because I've seen this as of late, and it seems to only happen when the ratings go down where people start criticizing the booking. I like to say for the most part of this year, the booking has been solid. But I kind of just wish they took a little bit more chances when it comes to certain things. And the last point I want to add, excuse me. You know, we always talk about spoilers and how some people think spoilers might harm the product. I think it helps in a sense. And I think sometimes when people are looking to see what's going to happen, you know, if there's that big title change or some big angle, that's going to want to make people say, hey, I need to see that episode. You know, because not everyone, we all have different schedules. Not everyone's going to be able to watch when it initially airs. And if, if in you know, I'm guilty of this. When I looked at the Mexico tapings when they were announced as far as the spoilers i just said man you know it just seemed just so so regular like there there's nothing that really just stuck out to me and i really thought with the mexico tapings they needed to be a hit and you know they've been a miss but it just as far as the ratings that go go i just think they just need to stay the course the one thing that the company's going to battle with is thursday night football now that thursday night thursday night in, uh, football has uh, been better in years past I mean, compared to years past i should say and as well as the nba that's about to start up if they just stay the course um keep putting on must-see television and taking some chances you know not being afraid to run some angles not only on impact but tying some of these things that happen on the twitch shows into impact programming i think they'll be fine right uh final thing i'm going to ask you as you know this will be the last time you hear our dulcet tones before uh bound for glory um do you think Bound for Glory is going to be better than Slammiversary? That's the question I want to go out on. I do not. And I think it has the potential to be better than the uh, previous Bound for Glory, but I do not think it's going to top Slammiversary. And personally, and this is my own feeling about it, I think it might be time to scrap Bound for Glory only because I think that's a concept that really represents the old regime. And it just seems like these past couple of years, for some reason, the difference between Slammiversary and Bound for Glory has been very apparent. So if this isn't a hit, you know, and two and three times better than the last one, maybe come up with a new pay-per-view. But that's just my own personal take. Okay, I'm going to wholeheartedly disagree with you there and ask what the hell you're smoking. Getting rid for Bound for Glory. Jesus, man. Come on, get a grip, bro. Get a grip. Uh, no, no. Um, to, to answer my own question, by the way, uh, well, first of all, I don't think they should get rid of Bound for Glory. Uh, I, I think they should maybe think, build better towards it in the future. You know, the last two years have taught us anything is that they haven't known how to build it. And, and the same for Slammiversary to some extent. You know, the last three major pay-per-views, I know we had, was it Redemption? I think that was the name of the, no, what, Redefined? I can't, whatever the pay-per-view was anyway. Uh, you know, the, the builds towards them haven't been great. And all the good stuff has been done like over social media or, or whatever it may be. It's because of other news, you know, whether that's Al Patron walking out, etc. So, you know, to, to answer the question, I, I think they need to think 
to better booking towards the pay-per-views. Uh, that's one thing they definitely do. But I honestly believe this Bound for Glory is going to be better than Slammiversary. And the reason being, and I mentioned this on our review show, is that Slammiversary for me was too by the book. There were some fantastic matches on there, but there was no, oh man, I've got to go see that if I hadn't seen it. You know, there's nothing in the booking there. There was no Rousseau stuff in there. And I think that every pay-per-view should make you want to go, man, I've got to go and tune into next week to see what the hell is the fallout from this. So I think that, that they would have learned something from that. And we already know there's going to be, you know, someone challenging Eli Drake. You know, Jericho's floating around everywhere. He's going to appear on the show. You know, uh, Tito Ortiz has to come in somewhere, maybe. Um, you know, so that, that there has to be something big that's going to happen there. Uh, and I truly believe that there, there is going to be. I think there's going to be some returns as well as Y2J. So I, I think as a spectacle and as a talking point around the water cooler moment, Bang for Glory is going to deliver. Um, and we, we know with the wrestlers involved in most of the matches, you know, I think that we're going to get something rather special this time. So so that's it. That's it from me. Um that's the final thoughts before Bound for Glory. Make sure you enjoy the show. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to check out Ro and I on Twitter, please do so. I've changed my Twitter handle, so I'm going to give us a cheap plug already. So my Twitter handle is now at V2, as in the letter, letter V, the number two, Adam, and then IL for Impact Lounge. So make sure you follow me. Uh, I've only got 521 followers. I'm feeling like a bit of a loser here. So make sure you do tune in and uh, go on Twitter and give us a follow because we do talk about other things as well. And Ro, what's what's your Twitter again? <laughs> Way to rub it in, man. I got like 200 something. Um, mine's <laughs> a, a, RT great underscore. Um, I enjoy the conversation with various people. I'm sorry I can't shut you out at the moment. I don't have my phone in hand, but um, you know, I talk about impact and other things, other interests. Oh, well, there you go. Sorry, I, did, I, I didn't mean to uh, follow or shame you there. Uh, <laughs> we can have a, a, a Twitter spat. There you go. That'll get your numbers up. Right. OK, guys, thanks for tuning in as always. Make sure you, you, you leave us some comments below and answer that trivia question and we'll give out the quickest answer or the first correct answer next week's show. For the time being, it's Adam saying goodbye for, for me and Ro. Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling-related content. This is the Impact Lounge. Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling-related content. This is the Impact Lounge.